Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning to everyone. My name is Nur Hidayah Binti Amr Tamizi. My student ID 2020-891552 and I from group F4 AS120119. And today I would like to present to you all about experiment 2, Newton Law of Motion. The content in this experiment is first objective, second apparatus, third procedure, fourth result, fifth analysis, sixth discussion, and last but not least, conclusion. Objective for this experiment is to investigate the relationship between total force act on an object with acceleration of the object. And the second one is to study the Newton's second law of motion. The apparatus in this experiment is click the link given for PHT simulation. This is the simulation that will be appear after you click the link given for the PHT simulation. Next, the procedure in this experiment is contain two situations. First situation is a no friction surface and the other one is with friction surface. So for the non-friction surface is firstly, click the link given and continue to force grab tab. In this tab, it shows with the introduction, friction, force graph, and robot moving company. But in this experiment, we just use the force graph. And second step is parameter setting need to be set as for the friction, we need to set for the ice for the no friction. And the object is the small crate. And lastly, add acceleration graph by click on that. For the third one, set the force applied to 500 Newton for the first data. And the fourth one, to begin the experiment, press the play button. And tabulate the result in table 2.1 after record the acceleration. And for the second reading, click the receipt all. The above step at least must be repeated for three times for each data. And step 2 until 7 would be repeated for another 9 data at table 2.1. And for the B, friction surface. It's same with the procedure for the non friction surface. Firstly, continue to force grab tab. And then, for the parameter setting, need to be set as the friction we need to change for the word. But the other two, for the acceleration and for the object, is the same. And the third one, set the force applied to 500 Newton for the first data. And to begin the experiment, just press the play button. And five, Tabulate the result in table 2.2 after record all the acceleration and for the second reading, click the receipt all. The above step at least must be repeated 3 times for each data and step 2 until 7 would be repeated for another 9 data in table 2.2 for the friction surface. For the result in this experiment, in table 2.1, it shows the experimental data for the non-friction surface. It has apple force, friction force, total force, and acceleration. For the F by force, I begin with 500 Newton and did 1400. For the, this experiment data for non-friction surface, that's why for the friction force, it becomes zero and the total force how to get the total force is for the applied force minus for the friction force and the value of the answer will become the total force. And for the acceleration, we must to have a tree reading for the acceleration and for the A4 is the average for the reading for the A1, A2 and A3. Same goes to table 2.2, experimental data for friction surface. It also contains applied force friction force, total force, and acceleration. For the applied force, I also start with 500 Newton until 1400, and for the friction force, we can get from the simulation, it's shown 
negative 294 and the friction force is same for all the data and for the total force we need to minus apply force and friction force and we can get the answer for the total force and for the acceleration we need to take for the three time reading of each data for a1 a2 and a3 and for the a4 is we need to find the average for this acceleration Next, for the analysis in this experiment, this graph shows the acceleration for non-friction surface versus total force. For x axis, it shows for the force total. Meanwhile, for the y axis, is the acceleration for this graph. And we also know from this graph that when the force total increases, the acceleration also becomes increases. That means the relationship between force and acceleration are proportional. In the graph also, I show how to determine the gradient by choosing two points are not in the data from table 2.1 from the straight line. This is the graph for the acceleration for friction surface versus total force. It's same as the previous graph. For the x axis, it contains for the force total. Meanwhile, for the y axis, it contains for the acceleration. The relationship between acceleration and force are so proportional. To determine the gradient also in the graph, we should choose two points that are not in the data or table in 2.2. This is the way how to calculate centroid in the graph. For the y and x axis, you need to plus all the data that you have and divide it with the how many total of the data that you collect. And the centroid will help you to make a good straight line in your graph. Question 2. From both graph, state the relationship between the total force with the acceleration of the object. The relationship between the total force with the acceleration of the object from the graph is proportional. The higher the total force, the higher the acceleration of the object. Question 3. Does the graph obey Newton's second law of motion? Yes, the graph in this experiment obey Newton's second law of motion. Newton's second law shows that there is a direct relationship between force and acceleration. The greater the force that is applied to an object of a given mass, the more the object will accelerate. For example, Doubling the force on the object doubles its acceleration. The graph shows the relation between acceleration and force are proportional and same with the Newton's second law of motion. Question 4. Determine the gradient slope of the graph. What do the gradient represent? So, for find the gradient for graph non-friction surface and friction surface, you have to choose Two points they are not in the data and use this formula y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 and the gradient from the graph force versus acceleration equal to mass. This represented the slope of the graph when f is the charge in force and a is the charge in acceleration. So the slope at any place on the graph is equal to the mass of the body accelerating which is m. Based on this experiment, the gradient from the graph represents the mass. Question 5. Using Newton's second law of motion, prove that the coefficient of kinetic friction mu k between the small crate and the wood surface is 0.3. As we know, the equation in Newton's second law of motion is force applied minus force friction equal to ma. And we need to substitute all the information as force 500 newton, small crate 100 kilogram, and A is 2.06 ms square. And then from the equation, we sub all the information in the equation and get the force friction is equal to 294. After that, we also know for the force equal to mu k and mu k equal to 294 and k equal to mg and we need to find the value of k that we get 981. 
Then to prove if, if the mu is the 0 0.3, we can calculate by substitute the value of force and k and we can get the mu is 0 0.3. For discussion in this experiment, refer to both graphs the relation between total force act on an object with the acceleration of the object is proportional. This experiment purposes to study Newton's second law of motion. Newton's second law of motion is about the relation between acceleration and force. Due to Newton's second law of motion also, acceleration is proportional to force while inversely proportional to mass. But, in this experiment, only focus on acceleration and force. This experiment was conducted to find the relation between total force at on an object with the acceleration of the object between non-friction surface and friction surface. The graph obtained in this experiment obey Newton's second law of motion. The relationship between acceleration and force in this experiment show the result as expected to be proportional following the law of Newton's second law. This can be seen in table 2.1 data for the non-friction surface and table 2.2 for the friction surface. Even though they are different with the percent of force friction, but it did not affect the result of data to obey Newton's second law. The greater the force that is applied to an object of a given mass, the more the object will accelerate. Other than that, this result also shows that this experiment does not have any experiment error because it was conducted by simulation. That's why the result comes out same as the theoretical for this experiment. Besides that, the gradient from the graph force versus acceleration equal to mass. The coefficient of friction mu is a measure of the amount of friction existing between two first surfaces. A low value of the coefficient of friction indicates that the force required for sliding to occur is less than the force required when the coefficient of friction is high. And formula that involved in this experiment are F equal to mu k, where F is a frictional force, mu is a coefficient of force, and k is a normal force. And last but not least, the conclusion in this experiment. The relation between total force A on an object with acceleration of the object is proportional. And Newton's second law of motion explains how force can change the acceleration of the object and how acceleration and mass of the same object are related. The greater the force that is applied to an object of a given mass, the more the object will accelerate. This is the reference that I got for this experiment. That's it for me. Thank you for watching my video.